Good morning. On behalf of everyone at St. Francis Episcopal Church in Charleston, South Carolina, I welcome you to this, our first Sunday celebration of the new liturgical year, liturgical year B, which primarily will be following Mark's gospel, but today we have a reading from Matthew. But most importantly, this is the first Sunday of Advent, and I am so grateful to have all my brothers and sisters and had a chance to speak with them from St. Francis shortly below before the service. It's a Thanksgiving week and it's a blessing to see everyone and for us to gather as we do every morning, Sunday morning at 10 o'clock uh, to worship virtually. Uh, this is a season of great anticipation uh, for the first coming of the Lord, his uh, birth, his uh, God coming to us in the flesh. And so uh, on this first Sunday, uh, we focus on uh, the concept of hope. Uh, something we've been at St. Francis uh, meditating about for the past four weeks, but uh, we have a new hope uh, that we uh, live into during this Advent season. So uh, thank you for being with us, and let us prepare our hearts to worship as we sing the first or a couple of verses of The King Shall Come When Morning Dawns. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who reigns and lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The lessons for this morning will be reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him, you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
We will read responsively by half verse, Psalm 8. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to us, help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts. How long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. And our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. The son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch comes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you will know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge and each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. You do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or at the cock crow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So my friends, I think to many on this first Sunday at Advent, the first Sunday of the beginning of a new liturgical season, the First Sunday of the season in which we, with great anticipation, look for the coming of the Lord and a concept of hope is explored, 
I think today's passage might sound a bit ominous to some, almost like Jesus is threatening about a surprise, a sudden coming of the Lord, perhaps out of the blue. But in reading and reflecting upon this passage, I think the real message to us today is not that. It's not about our doing things to prepare for a sudden coming of the Lord, as much as it is about our failure to be present so as to experience his presence. When is the moment the Lord comes? The text, if you read all of it, is really saying to us in every moment, at all time in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn. God is present everywhere, always and forever. God's always present. You cannot not be in the presence of God, but we're distracted uh, and therefore we may not be present to his presence. You know, in truth, all scripture, all Spiritual teaching really is guiding us to be present to his presence in every moment, in the evening, at midnight, in the morning, whenever the cock crows. When we are present to him, we will experience his presence. The problem is, however, we're almost always somewhere else, living in the past, or worrying about the future, it seems to me like the human mind is almost like a two-lane highway capable of carrying us only in two directions. We either reprocess the past over and over and over again, like obsessive compulsive people, which we are, thinking the same thoughts over and over and over again, or no better, we worry about the future over and over and over again. Being so limited in our thinking, it doesn't matter really how often you go to church or pray or do kind deeds if you don't allow yourself to be present to his presence. You know, we have to learn to be present to his eternal advent, his coming to be with us in all times and in all places. Every day we can experience his presence if we allow ourselves to trust in him and just focus on the moment. Thanksgiving Day, I experienced this in a beautiful and most unexpected way. It actually reminded me of the story of Martha scolding Jesus when her sister had been left to fix the meal alone, when Mary sat with Jesus and Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. Indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. My children and grandchildren agreed to all have COVID tests of Wednesday of last week in the hope that we might gather at our home for Thanksgiving. Aaron and I and everyone else were tested and found to be negative, so we gathered for a socially distanced Thanksgiving here this past Thursday. We all intentionally put away or silenced our phones, our iPads, or anything else that might distract us from being present to one another the entire day. Of course, I said a blessing and everyone around the table shared expressions of Thanksgiving most acknowledging in their comments at some point the unusual difficulties we faced this past year and concluding therefore that this Thanksgiving was very unique. Now I have five grandchildren and all of them are bright and intelligent and of course by genetics incredibly good looking. Ford who falls somewhere in the middle of the group age-wise who'll turn six next month is a uniquely gifted storyteller. Now Ford's quiet and usually content to play or read by himself, never needing anyone to keep him busy. He doesn't speak very often to the group, but when he does, we all listen because we found we have a lot to learn from him. At some point during the dinner, he raised his hand and said he had something to say. And to summarize, Ford wanted to remind us of the story of Thanksgiving and remind us that the pilgrims faced difficulties too and that many of them died in the process. 
then he said the most remarkable thing that changed everything I wanted to say to you today. Ford said, and I quote, that in the process they saw hope and they eventually formed an alliance with each other and had a meal to give thanks to God. And that is our story. That's what he said, and that is our story. Ford was an example to us that when we are present to each other in each other's presence, God's presence is revealed. The divine energy of God was so apparent, flowing through the words of 40, that each of us who were present knew God was present also. In his book titled, With Open Hands, Henry Nouwen wrote, quote, when we live with hope, we do not get tangled up with the concerns of how our wishes will be fulfilled. So too, our prayers are not directed towards the gift, but toward the one who gives it. Our prayers might still contain just as many desires, but ultimately, it's not a question of having a wish come true, but of expressing an unlimited faith in the giver of all good things. You might wish that, but you hope in, end quote. My friends, Advent is not just the four-week season before Christmas. Advent is always and everywhere at all times. He comes to us whenever we are willing to be present to him. Like Mary did when Martha was busy making a meal, like my grandson 40 is, and I hope to be. You know, when we turn off the cruise control and live in each and every moment, God is present in the morning and in the evening and at dawn and whenever the clock crows. Have a blessed Advent season. Amen. Now in the sure and certain hope of our risen Lord, let us again affirm our faith using the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. The prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant Almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world.
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reference for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all those lives are closely linked to ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend your mercy on all who have died and that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and the needs of others, either aloud or in our hearts. I invite your personal intercessions and prayers, either aloud or silently at this time. <clears throat> I give thanks for my St. Francis family. Let us pray for those that, that are alone, that have lost loved ones this year to COVID, to the healthcare workers, and for those in the community and other nonstop health, health, surf, health and services, hear our prayer. Oh God, in the course of this busy life, give us times of refreshment and peace and grant that we may so use our leisure to rebuild our bodies and renew our minds that our spirits might be open to the goodness of your creation and that we might be present always for you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the Lord, your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with also you. With you. Let us exchange the peace of Christ virtually or with those we are with. Peace. 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 Peace be with you. Peace. 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 Peace be with Peace. you. Peace. Peace. Okay, will you help me now, sweetheart? Mm -hmm. I'm going to clear this out.
So uh, before we uh, start our uh, Eucharistic celebration, I have, uh, because I have help this morning, um, have about 100 uh, wafers that I'll be consecrating this morning, along with uh, 25 wafers, which are gluten-free, in the hopes that uh, next Sunday, uh, you who are available will meet me at Holy Spirit between uh, um, next Saturday, excuse me, between 10 and noon. Uh, and bring your picks boxes uh, so that I might provide you with consecrated wafers that you might be able to communicate yourselves and others uh, during the remainder of the Advent season and, of course, on Christmas Eve, uh, and perhaps even during Christmas tide, as we'll be uh, having our uh, Christmas Eve service virtually as we are today by Zoom. So, next Saturday, I'll be at Holy Spirit as I had previously done between 10 a.m. and noon. And if you're not able to uh, uh, meet me at that time or and you've got a friend who's able to pick up your wafers for you, fine. And if not, I'd be glad to uh, drop those by your house, um, whatever's most convenient. But I'd like to get people to have the wafers uh, as early as possible in this season and certainly before Christmas. So with that, Let us begin our Eucharistic service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Yeah. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us in him everlasting life, then he, he shall come again in the power and great triumph of judge, to judge the world. We may without shame or fear rejoice and behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, join our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death, into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection. Well, we wait his coming in glory. And we offer this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, gracious Lord, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in this sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sacrificed by the Holy Spirit. 
In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Joseph and Mary, our patron St. Francis and all your saints, we may enter into the joy and everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of salvation, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. <clears throat> let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with great thanksgiving. Please, if you're able, communicate if you have wafers. If not, communicate with the Lord Jesus Christ who is present always with you in your heart. Let us pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. May God the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son, give you grace to prepare for eternal life. May God the Son, who comes to us as Redeemer and Judge, reveal to you the path from darkness to light. 
And may God, the Holy Spirit, by whose working the Virgin Mary conceived Christ, help you to bear the fruits of his holiness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and always. Amen. Amen. As we await the coming of our Savior, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.